When you think about places where to go to invest, you have to consider several different impo important factors. Africa, for example, is a very interesting phenomenon. So actually the demand from tourists is so high that the prices per night are significantly higher compared to the capital investment that you need to do in the property. And the big opportunity you're recommending to people is, Zanz is Zanzibar. I do, absolutely. Basically, the risk ratio is significantly lower than what it is uh, considered based on the public opinion because this is Africa. And for this reason, because people are considering Africa just like Africa, not like different countries with different risks. Welcome to the Hard Way Podcast with Joe DeSena, founder and CEO of Spartan Races. We're teaching you how to overcome your obstacles in your life the same way we teach our 10 million plus Spartans to overcome obstacles on the course with insight from the smartest, most accomplished experts from every corner of the world. Get ready to elevate your life today. Joe DeSena here, CEO and founder of Spartan and host of the Hard Way Podcast. I got my buddy Kahlo. Georgie, I pronounced that correctly this time, didn't I? Yeah, absolutely, Joe. How are we doing? Where are you located right now? Right now, Zanzibar, in the middle of the Indian Ocean. You are lucky. Tell, tell us about that before we get into who you are and how you could help everybody that's listening and watching. Tell us about being in the middle of the Indian Ocean. Well, actually, Zanzibar is one of those uh, traditional tropical paradise places like Seychelles, Maldives, Mauritius. Actually, these are the four you know, pearls of the Indian Ocean. This is uh, how they are known for most of the people. So uh, Zanzibar is just this kind of a traditional tropical paradise this destination, which is de de developing very quickly now in tourism like uh, especially particularly in tourism like i would say most of the economy is connected to tourism like 80 percent of the gdp where'd you grow up i'm from bulgaria originally oh i got my buddies in town my buddy petko um which is for an american a, a, a strange name uh he's a bulgarian wrestler he was on the national team of bulgaria so he's at my house right now actually we became buddies right. so you're the second bulgarian that i'm good friends with yeah he's a very bulgarian name petko <laughs> tell me, tell me about Bulgaria growing up. The reason I, I, I bring it up is I was just yelling at some team members today. I was saying we need to be less American. We need to be more Eastern European. I get really excited. Yeah, I get really excited about the work ethic of, of Eastern Europeans. And so, so tell me about Bulgaria. Well, you know, Eastern Europe in general, Bulgaria in particular are countries which are de uh, de uh, developing very quickly now, just because of all the changes that happened during the 90s. All those countries are developing extremely fast now because they have to actually compensate a lot. Because what happened during the 90s is that those countries, they lost quite a lot of economic power uh, compared to the rest of the world because of all the changes. And then they're now trying to, uh, they are trying to compensate now. However, they're coming with a very extremely high level of education, and this is helping those countries to be growing so fast. So for this reason, actually, many of the Eastern European countries are actually considered some quite well developing. I'm currently in uh, real estates and um, hotels, business, etc., like some things like this. And according to some latest surveys, some of the Eastern European hotels are considered some uh, like uh, one of the best in, in Europe. So there were actually some uh, survey about this and best and cleanest and Best hotels in Europe are Slovenia, Bulgaria, and all those countries in Eastern Europe, because most of them are new, like uh, they're built in a very innovative way and like all the, you know, very, very good focus on details. Push back if I'm wrong. I would argue that the foundational element of these Eastern European countries is the work ethic. They just, people work hard. When, when people work hard in any economy anywhere and they take pride in what they do, like you win, right? Absolutely. Uh, I fully agree with you. I'm just giving additional arguments on why this is happening. This is happening because they have to compensate now because of all those losses. And at the same time, they're well-educated. So they understand why is this supposed to be like this? So why do they have to do it this way? So why do they have to have these work ethics? Yeah, I think, I, I you know, years ago, back in the 1980s, I had a swimming pool business. I was a kid. I had a swimming pool business and I would hire Americans and I had a tough time with these American kids. And, and I, I met these two Polish kids and the Polish kids worked for me and then they worked with me and then they eventually bought my business. It was so unbelievable how much easier my job became, how much more successful my business was yeah. because these guys were like, they were animals Absolutely. in a good way. 
fully agree. Yeah, that's exactly what I what I mean because the, this, the currently people from these countries are now like in you know in the in a phase of um, developing their own countries and themselves as individuals, and you can see a lot of uh, a lot of people from those countries all around the world. So honestly, Joe, I would rather jump and like prefer to speak with you now about uh, investments in tropical destinations because I uh, I did quite a lot of investments in this respect and like uh, and I have my investments in about sixty countries now and uh, my latest you know uh, adventures are in Zanzibar. Uh, we can actually discuss about this because I see a lot of potential in uh, in tropical destinations now. So if you, if you compare, let's say, to the developed world, you will be surprised about how much money you can do in the developing the, uh, destinations, especially like those in the tropical destinations, tropical paradise places, because there are not so many. And a lot of people, especially after, after COVID, they're looking to go to places like this, work from places like this, own properties at places like this. And trust me, there are not so many places like this because these are islands and most of these islands is not possible to, to be building large, huge buildings. So you cannot overdevelop these places. A lot of people want to go there, but actually you cannot overdevelop there. These are just islands. And that's why I see quite a lot of potential in this. So this is why I actually jumped into this very, very, with a big focus now. What Give us, if you had to pick the top three locations around the world, to invest in these tropical locations, and you don't, and you didn't want to go to Bulgaria. I was hoping you were going to say Bulgaria, but okay, I'm I'm joking a little bit. Pick pick. Tell me tell me tell me those tell me those three places. Where would we go? I would rather say that Bulgaria is a bit too late already. Bulgaria is getting very expensive now, and the return on investment. For example, like, you know when you when you think about places where to go to invest, you have to consider several different impo- important factors. Like political stability, like uh, young population, uh, growth of the population, growth of tourism, interest for the country, all of those, all of the, those aspects. However, if the country is already very developed and uh, doing quite well, the, re- the return on investment, operate, uh, operation, uh, operational exp- uh, income compared to the capital expenses that you do um, to, for whatever, whatever you invest in, that is getting lower and lower. For example, the average in Europe now is about 3.5%. Germany is about 2%. This means how much money you do out of your investment. Imagine you invest a million dollars into a house. In Germany, you're going to make about 2% per year after all the taxes and maintenance. Average for Europe is 3.5%. Average in the US is about 6%. In Bulgaria, you can do about 5%. It's less than in the US. So it's actually kind of very developed now. And then Dubai is really doing well. They have about 8%. And currently, the place where I am right now, it's Zanzibar, is doing about 15 to 20%. So this is a staggering number. It's actually the reason for this is that this place is currently developing. So there is not enough um, not enough places developed at the, at the level that people are expecting. But at the same time, the tourism is growing so fast that people are just looking to stay somewhere at reasonable places, beautiful places. But there is not enough. And that's why there, are, there is like a window of, of opportunity, like of about, I, will, I believe, about five years or something like this, that this place is going to be really interesting to invest. If you compare it to other places like this, let's say Seychelles, Mauritius, Maldives, these places are also very developed now. So Seychelles, Maldives, and Mauritius are varying in between 4 to 6 7%, which is, you know, again, a little bit too late. However, there are places around the world where it's still interesting, not too late, not too early. you got to grab exactly the moment where you got to go to this to a place like this. For this, actually, one of the very interesting factors that you can follow is the price of the swap, the CDS, credit default swaps for the countries, and try to compare this to the real cases that have been happening in terms of uh, uh, financial, political instability, instability, so whatever is happening in this country. And what I figured out in this respect is that Africa, for example, is a very interesting phenomenon because uh, many people don't actually understand the countries of Africa in a proper way because we always speak about the USA, China, Russia, France, Germany, or other countries. But when we speak about Africa, would you would agree that many people just say Africa, right? They, as if there are no Correct. countries there. It's Africa. <laughs> but Africa is Correct. not one thing. Correct. For example, currently Tanzania and Zanzibar, which is Zanzibar and Tanzania is like one federation, similar to the American states in the US. They, 
they all have different presidents, etc. but it's like a federation. They are selling their swaps, which is actually something like the insurance risk for the country at about 404 basis points. This is giving the insurance risk of the country, kind of. But if you compare, let's say, to Europe, Europe is selling at about 60 basis points, so which is actually significantly lower, 40 to 60. The USA is like 35 or something like this, the price of the CDS. And at the same time, this is like 10 times more. So we are considering, let's say, this place is 10 times more risky. However, in the last about 25, 30 years, nothing political like didn't happen there, like uh, any kind of expropriations or anything like this. And at the same time, one very important aspect is what is the debt to GDP for a particular country when we're considering this. For example, in the US, you have 124%, which is debt to GDP now or something like this. In Europe, it's something like 60%. And this country here is having 40 to 44 percent in, in between the different countries uh, years. So basically, the risk ratio is significantly lower than what it is uh, considered based on the public opinion, because this is Africa. And for this reason, because people considering Africa just like Africa, not like different countries with different risks, I think there is a lot of potential in this uh, domain. And I call this for myself the bungee effect in finance. Because you know, in the bungee, you have this, uh, how to say, the reward in bungee is coming from the, uh, from the emotions and from the adrenaline that you're gonna get. This is the reward. And the risk on the other side is the risk of something going wrong. So the risk reward in bungee is improportional, which is happening also in some countries. Because sometimes there is an improportion because we, we consider that in finance, risk reward is always connected, right? The higher the reward, the higher the risk, but not always like this. In bungee, it's not like this, for example. You have a very high reward, a lot of adrenaline, right? For a fraction of the risk, because actually the, the risk in bungee is really low. So this kind of effect, you can try to find, that, find in finance if you drill deeper into the specifics of any particular country. And in this case, I see a big potential in this country and a few others. So particularly Zanzibar. That's why I developed uh, here two resorts. And currently I'm building a village. I'm building a small town with a, with a school and uh, a whole environment. Because I see a big potential of growing in this, in this place. What would somebody spend right now? If they were to go to Zanzibar, how much would it cost? How much? Well, Zanzibar is, how to say, how much would it cost? If you're coming from the US, probably your ticket would be economy, maybe something in the range of about one and a half to $2,000 return, something like this. $2,000 flight, what does a meal cost? What does a meal cost? Something like a uh, meal. $20, $30. How much is a hotel night? Well, this is a very open question, you know, like anywhere else. Uh, if you go to the nice properties on the beach, it can vary from Okay, let's say basic property on the beach would start from about $100 per night. And then you could easily go to over $1,000 to $5,000. Uh, some of the expensive ones go to $15,000, $25,000. So basically, this is very important to know. For example, Joe, if you can own a house at a tropical destination like Zanzibar with a 365 days a year season, because the temperature in Zanzibar is 25 to 30 degrees, all year long, all the time, it's 25 to 30 degrees. So it's a perfect temperature. So we don't have any seasonality. So if you can own a house that is generating a thousand to a few thousand dollars per night, per, per night, based on such a long season, you will be happy. So basically the idea is that we're speaking about investments into this country. So I would advise anyone that is considering investments outside of the developed countries like US and Europe, to consider places like this, because these kind of places, they are really offering something uh, that is unachievable in many other countries. That's why I'm saying that you can easily over 15 to 20% return on investment. So it, it, a nice a nice property is gonna cost you a million, a million two, something like this? Well, say for example, let me give you an example, a basic property on the beach. Let's say, I'm gonna give you an example with a village that I'm building. The cheapest house at my village is in the range of about $100,000, something like this. This house is going to be generating for you as an investor about $20,000 a year net. Basically, this house we are renting for $200 per day, minimum, 
So it's minimum two hundred dollars per day. And imagine because I have a management company here, we're managing all these houses and everything in the village, in between the resorts and everything. So basically, uh, this is the mathematics. You do two hundred dollars per day for a property of about a hundred thousand dollars. How in demand is 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 there more demand than there is supply? Of course, otherwise the prices wouldn't be like this. So actually, the demand from tourists is so high that the prices per night are significantly higher compared to the capital investment that you need to do in the property. You can still build cheap because there is not enough. And at the same time, when you're renting, you're renting expensive just because there are many tourists that they, they, they don't have anywhere to sleep because actually the growth is very, very significant. That happened actually in the uh, around COVID. When COVID hit, Zanzibar became extremely popular because it was one of the very few places in the world that were not closed. Actually, you could go anytime and it's like permanent weather. I think it was similar in, the, in Miami, by the way. Florida was like kind of open during cold time, all this period of time. Very true. Yes, very true. All right. So you're, you're, you've got the Bulgarian mindset, the Bulgarian work ethic, and you're running around finding these amazing opportunities. And the big opportunity you're recommending to people is answer is Zanzibar. I do, absolutely. Because as I already mentioned, I have my businesses in over 60 countries, but currently I'm, bu- I'm, I'm actually based in Zanzibar. I have my, my family, my little daughter here, and my wife is here, and uh, she's going to school at the end of our beach, which is just here behind me. It's a wonderful place for growing uh, kids because it's they're all the time out, outdoors and like, you know, nice weather, nice everything, beach, lifestyle. And we have a British international school, which is like, 10 minutes away, and currently we'll be, we're building our own. We call our own uh, school Green Minds Innovate. Green Minds Innovate is actually kind of like self-explanatory. The main idea is that kids are living in this environment with families which are all about active lifestyle, sports, and active living. And at the same time, we are part of the, of the, um, of the reality now. So it's a very innovative environment where we're uh, innovating in green technologies. So basically, that's the main the main direction of our existence here. I'm going to hook you up. I just recently met with a group that's built a two hour online learning program. You could do all your education, K through 12, in two hours online. They're getting kids into Stanford. The scores the kids are achie- achieving are much better than in school. And then you have six hours to do much better things like learn how to build a business, learn the arts, do your sport etc. So I'll connect you with this group if you'd like. Lovely, of course. I would love to have these kind of uh, innovative systems because I see that uh, what we do here is also giving good results. We made some tests uh, with other kids uh, from Europe, for example, and it appeared that kids here are doing very well, uh, especially when it is in active environment. For example, we did a test for maths under pressure. So you have to do some mathematical uh, you know, tests. Uh, while well, you're running, jumping, and doing many different things like this, like uh, 10 years old kids, and they're doing very well under physical tension, and at the same time, they have to do like maths, etc. So, uh, quite well. So, I'm very happy with the kids. I was going to say, how do people come visit you in Zanzibar? I'm going to come visit. You just uh, get, the, the, get the plane, jump on the plane, and come over. It's easy. You just fly to Europe, you can fly anywhere to Europe at some of the big airports, and there are many direct flights which are landing straight next to uh, my village here. I love it. Well, we're going to come visit. How do, pe- how do people find you online? I have several different developments here. So one of my uh, main resorts is called The Nest Boutique Resort, and there is another one called Kinazio Pepo, but the newest development is called Ankaya Village. And in Ankaya Village, people can be buying villas. and then can- But they- we also, by the way, do fractional sales, which is, uh, which is another way of opportunity for investments because it's like uh, something that might be, you know, interesting for especially people that are more like into jumping into quick investments because you can do intraday trading with this, which you can actually buy and sell real estates like in real time. So that's the idea of fractional investments. Thanks for coming on. You're awesome. I'm definitely coming to visit. I'm bringing the whole family, so make room. Yeah, lovely. Just let me know. <laughs> <laughs> would love to especially if you like different sports we already we already have like big gym calisthenics sparks water sports everything that you can imagine stables we have amazing frisian horses like everything that is all about sports 
So here's a question. Everybody that's listening thinks that you're an absolute madman. You've moved your family to Zanzibar. You're working like a maniac. How do you balance it all? Well, I wouldn't really say that I'm working like a maniac. Uh, I think that we really have time for everything. So what I do is that I normally sleep about six hours uh, and then I wake up quite early in the morning. I wake up at about five and here the day starts really early at about five, five thirty the day starts until about 7 p.m. So when I wake up at about 5.30 until, uh, until noon, I don't do any business. There is, this is only personal time for me and for my family. So what we do, we, are a special, we have special meditation in the morning because we have this uh, blue light um, walking on the beach because we're collecting this blue light from the, from the sun in the very morning. It's actually super healthy. And then we do these uh, breathing meditations, etc. Then we are running on the beach. Then we come back. We take the horses and the dogs. We are running with the horses. We go swim with the horses. Then we go for kite surfing. And then we go for the gym. This is actually the traditional stuff that we normally do in the morning. And this is until noon time. And uh, afternoon, in the afternoon, I start working. And we should still play with the kids when they come back from school. Uh, but essentially, what I see, um, sometimes people ask me, but Carlo, when you are actually doing so many hours of training and so many hours of family time, then why do you, the, the, would you work at all? The reality, I see that there is plenty of time because I'm not losing time in the car. I'm not losing time traveling somewhere or I'm generally not losing time because I'm trying to focus on the most important things that make me happy. And for this, actually, I developed something that I call the seven components of happiness of Carlo. This is for me. These are the seven most important things in my life where I want to be sure that I'm investing 99% of my time and efforts. And doing this, I see that I have plenty of time because when I sleep for uh, six hours and I have another six hours for me and my family in the morning, these are 12 and I still have another 12 hours to work, Joe. (laughs) So it's actually quite a lot of time if you're not distressed and distracted. Because very often you go after the dreams of others or some other things where you're just where we're just losing time. But in this particular case, if you're really focused on what we know that is important, we really have time. So I don't struggle for time. I have time for everything. I love it. All right. Well, we're gonna come visit you. I'm glad. Um, I'm glad we had this talk. And Zanzibar is now on my list. <laughs>